Tracy Quisenberry, and I am the founder and executive director of Icing Smiles. So what inspired you to create Icing Smiles? So that is a great question. I get asked that a lot. A lot of people kind of expect this big light bulb moment, and it really was more of a combination of things. Um, I've always had a passion for service, for one. Um, it, two, my day job is in the tax field. So that tells you right there that I needed a little bit more <laughs> in, in life. Um, and I gave birth to two premature children. So it, seeing what prematurity and even minor health issues can do to a family, um, when I decided to start a nonprofit where we were, you know, providing temporary escapes through baked goods, um, that tended to be my target audience just because we had a, a little bit of our own health scares within our family. So can you tell me a little bit about <clears throat> what Icing Smiles does? Sure. So we provide, our mission is to provide dream cakes for kids with critical illness, as well as their siblings. Um, but I always like to caveat that mission by saying it's not what you expect. It's, you know, a lot of people, when you say cake, they assume you're talking about like a sheet cake from a grocery store. Right. And what we deliver are these custom decorated, elaborate cakes, similar to what you would see on Food Network. Um, and, and the goal is to provide these kids with something to celebrate. I mean, normalcy has been taken from them and cake brings things back to normal, even for just a short period of time. Plus it gives parents a reason to take pictures. I mean, if you think about it, when you have a child that spends a lot of time in a hospital bed or sick, you're not taking pictures that often. This gives you a chance to kind of commemorate their life. How is it for you that, you know, this simple <laughs> gesture is, you know, it does have an impact on people's lives? So, Michael, that's something that um, I think we didn't realize the impact. I thought, you know, I thought it would be just a nice, simple gesture. And very quickly, I learned that, you know, I'll speak to the impact on the families we serve, but also the impact on our volunteers. I mean, I can't tell you how many of our volunteers say they stay in the craft um, just to be able to serve Icing Smiles and they maintain their skills so that they can serve these kids. So from that standpoint, you're seeing volunteers' lives being changed. Um, and But from the families that we're serving, I mean, we really truly believed that it would be okay kind of in and out, you know, you'd have a small impact and you'd walk away from a situation and their lives would get back to what they were. Obviously not every situation, but in a lot of situations, that impact extends for a long time because these families realize that there are people out there that are willing to invest in their child, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40 hours of their own time and their own funds. I mean, you know, the price of eggs right now, Right. Uh, you know, they're investing in, 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 in a stranger. And I think that that changes people when you've been invested in, in that way, it gives you a little bit of a sense of hope and that you're not on your journey by yourself. Well, with the, the cakes and the whole <clears throat> process, it helps the kids, but how talking to the families, how does it help the parents? Well, I would say that, you know, it's funny, we just, we just finished a blog um, where I, they were kind of interviewing me on, on, on why I did this. And, and a lot of people think it's about the kids, but as a, as a mom who went through the birth of two premature babies and, and health, different types of health scares, but two health scares, um, you, you just, your heart breaks for these moms that, you know, they, they're, they're looking for the quintessential childhood for their kids and that's getting ripped from them. So I really believe that our mission is just as much for the parents as it is for the kids, because these parents now are given a little control back yeah. um, and they are able to do something for their child, no matter what the situation is. You know, if the child is in a hospital bed, you can bring in a cake. If you're throwing a party for your child and the child is there and up running around, you can bring in a cake. It doesn't matter. You can do something for your child that they would not normally have. I mean, very few people get the kinds of cakes that we deliver. 
So it's giving them a chance to take control back. And I think that they need that and it gives them a little bit of spark of energy. So with the cakes, what is the <laughs> process to uh, create them? Huh. Well, there's creating and then there's qualifying a family and there are two completely different things. Yeah. So there's actually a lot that goes on behind the scenes that a lot of people don't realize. Um, we pro we have several hours of work before like a family kind of gets approved and a baker gets assigned. When it comes to creating the cakes themselves, what we do is, is in our initial process, we ask the families for a theme for the cake. And then we allow our volunteers complete control over design um, for multiple reasons. One being our volunteers are at all different levels. So handing them a picture of a cake that they can't execute won't do any good. Um, but what's amazing is um, watching our bakers once they are, or I should say our volunteers, once they're assigned a theme, watching their imagination go crazy. And, and we have a Facebook group where they talk about the designs that they're working on. And, and it's, they just, they embrace this and they throw themselves so much into, well, do you think they would like this? And, and, you know, it's just amazing to see what people are willing to do for others. So I would say there's probably about 10 design hours that often go into cakes ahead of the actual baking and decorating, which is why, you know, you're looking at 30 to 40 hours probably per cake for our dream cakes. Wow. That's amazing. So, well, they did, time. I saw on the website, <laughs> they do look amazing. I, I can't cook cake. So <laughs> yeah. they look great. I can't either anymore. Like I, I joke that it, it very quickly, I, I mean, I started the organization because I love to decorate and um, very quickly, I became out talented <laughs> for my for within the organization, and I, I I don't do it anymore. We I leave that to the experts. <laughs> How was it cooking? I mean, did that you know a part of the process? Did that feel good? The the beginning of making it. I so I I used to love it, and it well. I still do. I mean, but I just don't have the time to do it anymore. Right. But I can tell you what drew me to it was when you create a custom cake that, you know, is sculpted or it's tiered or it's got some gravity defying element, it, um, people are just amazed. So it's not the 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 baking and the decorating itself. That's tedious and exhausting. And but the reaction of people when they see a well-designed cake makes all of the hours worth it. So I miss that part of it, but I can get the feedback from my families and that's good enough. <laughs> so I was looking at your bio on your website and your children are uh, older now. Uh, what are. have you learned from them? From my kids? Um, <laughs> there's never a dull moment. Um, change <laughs> is inevitable. Um, it, it's, it's interesting because, um, both of them started out with, now this is as infants, they were never life-threatening illnesses, but right. th their starts in this world were a little bit of a challenge. And now, you know, this may, I have a daughter who's graduating Navy ROTC from Yale as a chemical engineer. Um, my son is playing lacrosse at Clemson, um, you know, and, and following in his mom's footsteps as an accountant. So, I mean, it's, um, it's amazing to see that time just does not stand still. And no matter what your, your the challenges in the beginning, there's always some place to take it and make it do something good with it. And that's really what came from, you know, this, it was very stressful when they were born, but what, what, what it, it landed with is, is a nonprofit that I never would have considered had they not had their health issues. So it's pretty fun. So what are the differences between <clears throat> running a nonprofit and uh, your previous work with tax? Well, I'm doing both still. <laughs> so I can, I, that's very easy. So um, I will say there is a significant um, overlap that people don't realize. Um, because of my business background, um, Icing Smiles is here. Had I not had exposure to the legal and tax side of um, running a business, 
-hmm. I never would have been able to get our incorporation papers filed or our, um, our 501c3 status from the IRS. I did it all myself. I didn't have to hire an attorney or an accountant. And that's a, that's a five to $15,000 savings. So there is a significant overlap and running a nonprofit, you have to treat it like a business. I have to be responsible for our donor dollars. So from, <laughs> so that's the overlap. The difference is my side hustle, this icing smiles gig that I have going is so much more rewarding. I mean, I really don't care how much I save. Hopefully my boss is not going to listen to this, but <laughs> I, you know, I don't, I, 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 I like my job. It's a job, but that's just it. I mean, I'm not changing lives in my, in, in my tax job in icing smiles. We do get feedback that lives are being changed. And that's an amazing feeling to know that I have a small part in that. What motivates you? Those that feedback. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there are definitely times where I say, why am I doing this? Because it's effectively two full-time jobs and one is a volunteer job. Um, and that's not easy. But when you get feedback from a mom that lost her child the day before um, and we had just served him a cake and the feedback that you get is you made my child's last day on earth a celebration and I didn't think that that was possible whoa I mean that's how can you stop doing it you know when you get when you get feedback like that you just have to keep going I mean and it's it's like a spark plug you know that'll get me through the next six months until I get more feedback you know something like that but it's definitely the feedback from the families do you have a uh, another story that comes to mind that you know that helped your heart Oh, absolutely. I mean, I could, I could talk all day. How much time have we got left? Um, <laughs> I could talk all day about these crazy fun stories. Um, and they're sad, but at the same time, it's hopeful and it it shows the power of small gestures. And that's what I want to stress is that you don't have to change the world. All you have to do is something small and you can impact one person's world and that's enough. But to answer your question, we had a family in rural Kentucky, quintuplets, okay, rural Kentucky. And the family requested, obviously, they all have the same birthday. So mom requested five dream cakes. And I thought, there is no way we're going to pull this off in rural Kentucky. How many volunteers do we have there? Right. So I spoke with the mom and said, you know, we'll try but I think we may have to go with just five different themes on one cake, you know, so just let's manage expectations. Well, we found this amazing, we call our volunteers sugar angels. We found this amazing sugar angel who stepped up and did five separate dream cakes for the same day, completely donating her time and materials, delivering the cakes. And then we got a letter later that week from the child the sick child who has cancer and he says this is the first time since my diagnosis that i'm happy i have cancer my siblings have never had their own birthday cake and this makes it worth it so things like that that you're like it's a cake <laughs> it's a cake but cake can make a difference it's just like a, almost a universal love language so that's one um, do you want one more? Yes, please. Okay. So another one, this was very early on. We served a, a, a teen in central Ohio and she was a poet and she was being, she was getting self-published for a book, but she was in end stage of cancer and on hospice. And she wrote us a letter. This is before I probably even had a volunteer application. And she said, I, my only wish is to have an icing smiles cake so that I can throw a party for my friends and family. And she knew what that meant. So we came in with a cake that looked just like the book that she was having published. And it was, it was a celebration of her life, but she was there. And everyone knew that they were there to say goodbye and she knew it too, but it was still, the focus was on this cake 
which gave everybody a chance to celebrate without it being a sad occasion. So things like that are just, you know, that's another one. There are probably more, but those are the biggies. So where do you want to see the organization next three to five years? Oh, my dream would be for Icing Smiles to become a household name. I mean, I just want to be able to reach the kids that that are qualify for our service, that deserve our service. Um, and it it's hard. It's hard to do on a limited budget. So that's ultimately my goal. I would like us to become the, you know, the Bake-A-Wish, <laughs> uh, you know, of, oh, of, I the, like that. <laughs> of the nonprofit world. Yeah. If it weren't a um, trademark violation, we probably would have used that as opposed to icing smiles. But, um, but yeah, it's kind of, that's where I would like to see us because when you have that type of, of recognition, it's, it's easier um, to bring in donations. It's easier to bring in sponsors. It's easier to reach the kids that you're serving. It's easier to reach volunteers. So that's my ultimate goal is to become a household name. I am Chelsea Bogg. I am the development and communications manager for Icing Smiles. How did you get involved with Icing Smiles? Yeah, so I joined Icing Smiles um, actually as a sugar angel initially, um, right out of culinary school. I had just graduated and I was looking for for more opportunities to do cakes and had a strong passion for philanthropy and giving back. Um, a friend of mine uh, referred me to the organization and um, it, it seemed like the perfect fit for me combining, you know, two of my strongest passions, pastry and baking and, and giving back. Um, so I, it, I joined back in 2013. So I guess 10 years ago. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so how was it, uh, you know, continuing to, uh, work with the organization? Yeah, um, I think Smiles has been incredible to me, and I have loved so much just being a part of the organization and growing with them and being a part of helping their growth. Um, I started out serving cakes as a sugar angel. Um, I think we counted the other day, I've up to seven. I've done um, dream cakes, um, which I, I've i had the honor of delivering most of them and getting to see the reaction of the kids that I've been able to serve, which has, has really been a special experience. Um, my, my story with Icing Smiles kind of grows over the years. Um, when I started as a sugar angel, I never realized I, I would qualify for a cake as well. Um, I, you know, like I said, I started as a sugar angel, just wanting to give back. Um, and then in 2016, um, my first son was born. His name is Vincent. Um, Vincent was, was born healthy, um, to our knowledge. Um, but three weeks in, um, Vincent stopped breathing in his sleep. Um, 911 was called and it was determined that Vincent had several congenital heart defects. Um, Vincent went through four open heart surgeries, several heart catheterizations and ended up passing away at 10 weeks old. Um, so when I joined the organization, you know, I felt the power and the impact of what we did from the baker side. Um, but then come 2016, I then learned, you know, the impact from the family side. It is, uh, my mission in life, my, my drive to, to carry on Vincent's legacy, to live in his honor, um, and, and live a life that he'd be proud of. Um, so I throw a birthday party for him every year. I threw his first birthday party and, it was so special to be able to do. And I loved getting to honor my son in that way. Um, but I'd be lying if I said it wasn't hard. <laughs> um, it's a very emotional time. Um, and so while I had it in me to plan that party, I didn't have it in me to make the cake too. Um, so I leaned on Icing Smiles and they provided, um, we provide memorial cakes as well in Icing Smiles as um, cakes for kids currently fighting. And so they, I was provided a memorial cake in honor of Vincent. Um, so I really felt the organization full circle at that point. I got to experience both sides of, of what 
you know, the baker and the family gets to feel, um, which ignited my fire even further um, for wanting to be a part of Icing Smiles and and serve and give back. Um, Tracy is lives in Maryland and that's where I'm located as well. Um, and she learned some of my story um, and I was invited to be uh, the keynote speaker at a buttercream ball, which is an in-person fundraiser that we hosted in Baltimore. Um, and then also get to take place in the showpiece showdown, which is three bakers competing at the front of the room, um, creating sugar show pieces for the audience. Um, and, you know, having your cake voted on and you're paired with, a. Uh, a medical child for that event. Um, so we got to help. Ella was my partner. I got to help her learn some things about cakes and baking. And we actually won the showdown as well. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, it was so fun. Uh, uh, you know, a great atmosphere. Again, great people just, you know, combining my worlds. Um, because I had won, I got invited back to the next year. And then that's when I got to know Tracy better and she learned my background goes farther than just pastry. Um, I also have my degree in marketing and communications and my master's in business administration as well. Um, so Tracy has a wonderful talent of her um, where she she finds people's strengths and pushes them. <laughs> so um, she had asked me about coming on board with Icing Smiles from the um, administrative side as well to help with development and communications, which has brought me to where we are today. How has helping other families helped your healing process? Yeah, you know, I I wish I didn't, but I do. I get the fight. I get the exhaustion. I get the, you know, the, a cake is so much more than a cake. <laughs> and it's something we say over and over, but I can't stress enough how much that really means. A cake can move mountains. A cake, can, it, it's got a ricochet effect. It doesn't just... In, it, you know, help and inspire that child. It helps their parents. It helps the neighbor that came to the birthday party that got to witness it happening. Um, you know, helping my experience has allowed me to know the relief that I'm bringing to another mom. Um, you know, my fight with Vincent was for, was for 10 weeks and it's turned into a lifelong fight for his memory. Um, but from a medical side and a medical standpoint, it's exhausting. Um, and these kids deserve nothing more than that, that moment of normalcy, um, that this cake is providing them. And so knowing that I'm helping and assisting in that, that one moment, um, really fuels my fire. So how is it, uh, working with Tracy? Yeah, Tracy's great. Um, you know, Tracy's really, really special in that she has a passion for, for the nonprofit world, but then she also understands the tax and the business world at all yeah. also, um, which is really special in forming a nonprofit. I mean, this world is full of people with brilliant ideas and people with passions and drives, um, which the world needs and the world needs all this good, but in or it is, business and it is finances and it is understanding how to properly run this organization in the most financially like cautious matter while still you know well to be able to serve as many people as possible um and tracy does a beautiful job at bringing together those worlds and helping us reach truly as many people as we can um she's great at bringing every idea she can think of to the table. No idea is a stupid idea and let's take it. Let's try it. And let's run with it. If it works. That's a good boss. <laughs> <laughs> She's great. <laughs> so what motivates you? Yeah. I mean, my motivations, you know, come a lot from, from Vincent, my first son. Um, then I also have a one and a three-year-old now, um, Mackenzie and Marshall. And I, I want to be an example to them. I wanted to be an example, um, you know, for them to see that this world is more than just, you know, what it shows on the surface. And this world is full of a lot of negatives. Um, and we need the light and we need the positive. And it, it takes one person to be that. And I want to teach my kids that they can be just that. Um, so that my, my kids and my family are a lot of my motivation um, to what I do. So where do you want to see the organization in the next uh, few years? 
Yeah. Um, one of our goals and a lot of what we're talking about right now is we want Icing Smiles to be a household name. Um, we want Icing Smiles to just roll off the tongue and you know exactly what we're talking about. Um, we want to involve every baker and we also want to involve every family that we could potentially serve. I mean, we, we're getting close to reaching 30,000 cakes that the organization has served, which is such a huge, big number. I mean, the fact that we, we've we served in the across the whole country and we have bakers, you know, Northeast, South and West that are all serving for Icing Smiles is an incredible accomplishment. Um, but sadly, there are way more kids that need to be touched and served by this organization also. Um, and there's plenty of, of families who would benefit so much from what we do, but they just don't know about us yet. Um, to no fault of ours or their own, we're growing at a pace that we can. Um, but we've recently put in a lot of um, things that would help the steps to reach more families. So we've automated parts of our process that cut back on volunteer hour, man hours, which allow us then to take those volunteers and put them in places of outreach of, you know, um, partnering with other organizations and, you know, talking to mom groups or, you know, my mind does everything, you know, congenital heart, but like uh, a group of, you know, heart activists of teaching them and telling them about what Icing Smiles could do and serve. And just if it's an email with a link to our organization, it can move mountains um, by by sharing with who we are. So I'm really part of the the drive and the mission of the organization of wanting to make Icing Smiles a household name.